I'm here with Brian Mackay Lyons. We may be at the American Institute of Architects convention, but Brian Mackay Lyons is actually a renegade from another land. My husband always jokes that there's no weather above that kind of border. When you watch the weather on TV in America, there is no weather above the northern states of America. But actually, we know can't, they, all the weather comes from you guys, all Brian. All stuff. <laughs> Brian Mackay Lyons, uh, Sweet Apple Architects, is based in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And uh, congratulations. The firm is winning an AIA Honor Award this year for a project called Ghost. And I've had the pleasure to follow Brian's work for a number of years. And uh, we were talking for a few minutes ago. And what's interesting about Brian's work is it's not just about architecture for which he's being honored, but it is really about ideas. And he's been a very powerful um, promoter and um, brought a number of architects together, including the architects that were just here, Vincent James and Jennifer Yost, to talk about ideas that really have to do with an authenticity of modernism. Uh, words like regionalism and vernacular have kind of a bad name. They shouldn't. What Brian and many of his colleagues have done is taken it to a whole other level where it really is about connecting to place, about being responsible, about being sustainable in the broadest sense of the word. So I'm really honored that you are joining us today. And I'd just like to, you maybe the way to start is not actually with the place for which you're being honored, which is the, the ghost uh, site and the architecture you've built there, but the ghost idea. Can you tell us how it started? Well, uh, I guess as a young architect and uh, and professor, I was frustrated, getting frustrated at the... Can you hold it close? Getting frustrated at the lack of connection between uh, the world of ideas and the world of things, the world of practice and the world of the academy. It seemed that those two worlds were moving farther and farther apart, and it was an unwholesome picture. And so I just took a lot of students out to the farm and just uh, decided to kind of go back to the basics. and. It was easy with first-year architecture students when we began because they know they went into architecture because they know it was about building things and it was about the landscape and the environment and it was about community. And so uh, we started building projects that were based on interpreting that landscape, uh, crafting something together that would become a venue for a community event. So it was really out of anger with architectural education that it got started. Because students, there were a lot of students who really didn't understand how to build, even the simplest structure. And when you say you took them to the farm, can I just say that uh, Brian Mackey Lyons and his wife Marilyn have the most beautiful piece of earth, the beautiful landscape on the edge of Nova Scotia, which I think has been a place, as you said, that has been inspiring your students and certainly has inspired you. And that place has been an act of will, too. I mean, it's a place that has had 400 years of European settlement and thousands of years of native settlement, Native American settlement. Um, but really, when we started this whole process, you know, many, many years ago, we really had to begin by clearing the land again, like the pioneers. So that landscape that you visited is really a, a beautiful place, got good bones, but it needed a lot of work. It needed a lot of elbow grease. And I think, actually, now that we're talking about the actual place and the previous settlement, it might be a good time to actually talk about the word ghost and how you came up with that name, which, which originally was the ghost laboratory, this kind of workshop that you held for your students. But why do you call it ghost? Well, all seafaring cultures have a kind of myth about the burning ghost ship on the horizon and, you know, that you see at night, this apparition. And so I remember when I began clearing the land here, um, finding the foundations, finding the rhubarb, finding the, da the daffodils coming up, beginning to palpate and see how people used to live there. It just struck me as a kind of uh, a ghost of a, of a community that had been lost, that had disappeared. And you could feel that 400 years or thousands of years actually of human inhabitation. They almost close your eyes and smell the laundry on the clotheslines. So it was kind of a ghost of a community that had been there and We've just been trying to put it back very gently over the last 20 years, I guess. 
can you talk a little bit about how this landscape in this place and the tradition of human habitation in Nova Scotia, you've talked a little bit about the fishing shacks, the shipbuilding tradition, how that has actually inspired your own architecture? Well, I like to say that all of our projects really grow out of our barnyard. You know, that the fish, the, the buildings that make that collection of buildings around our barnyard um, have really inspired, uh, you know, a 35-year career for me in architecture and also not just the buildings but the spaces between the buildings, more importantly, in, ter in terms of making microclimates. And, and so really the whole, that site has been a kind of a hat that I've been pulling rabbits out of for 35 years and, and I think it doesn't matter where you, d you find that place for yourself because uh, any place is good. Um, and you know, you, you have to learn to read landscape and so on somewhere, read culture somewhere, so you, you learn it, like, a, like your manners. You learn your manners at home at the dining room table with your parents when you're growing up. Uh, then you can take those things that you learn out with you in the world, right, when you grow up. And, and so all of our work really is in rings out from this barnyard. This thing we're image we're looking at right now actually is an old octagonal barn on the site of this ghost property. And this is a barn that you did not build, but you restored. But one of the things, after m many summers of holding these workshops for hi uh, his students, uh, to which critics and other architects would be invited to participate as critics, uh, last summer this culminated in a rather extraordinary conference in which I th you drew together a number of your colleagues, um, and you, it's not remotely that you would share anything stylistic, and your colleagues came from all, mostly from all over the United States, but also as far away as Australia, Glenn Merkett was there. But you share a number, you share values, I would really say. You share values about architecture, and it was, qu it was a really a wonderful event. Could you talk a little bit about those values that you share and how they're expressed in the architecture of your uh, your architecture and that of some of your colleagues? Well, it was a three-day event where we built it around three themes, um, place, craft, and community. And in a way, for many years, I've been thinking about a one-room schoolhouse, you know, for architects that would get back to the fundamentals of architecture. You know, if you're, you're going to have three courses in a school of architecture in a one-room schoolhouse, those would be three good courses that cover the kind of, that are comprehensive enough to cover our whole discipline. And so in a way, those ideas are, are a kind of fundamental common values, represent common values that we all share. So the people who came to Ghost Conference last year, uh, uh, Kevin Lippert described it as the, the G20, <laughs> uh, were really uh, people that for the most part had been part of Ghost in the past. They had been the guest architects, the guest critics that had come over the years, with a few notable exceptions like Vince and Jennifer here who, who, uh, who ought to have been there earlier and were there last summer. So it was a kind of community of people. We'd worked together. We built these projects together. You know, Marlon Blackwell, who you're going to speak to, yeah. Tom Kundig, who you're going to speak to, uh, Marlon, who got an AIA on award as well this year. You know, so a gang that uh, share a lot of common values, friends, respected friends and colleagues, around these ideas of place, craft, and community. I know you're not showing this here, but one of the things I thought was interesting in a conversation that we had was how you take that idea of place and that idea of craft and community and you transport it, export it, translate it, because you um, got the commission to build the Canadian Embassy in Bangladesh. And that was a very different proposition, in a very distant part of the world. And you had to think about how you described to me, think about what Maybe that wanted to be. D anyway, tell us a little bit about how you approached a project like that on the other side of the world mm. with these well, ideas, community, I, I place, and. Yeah, well, I think uh, a place-based way of thinking or a critical regionalist way of working is really not a style and it's not about any one place. Sure, you understand the place where you grew up perhaps better, um, but it's really a toolkit. It's a toolbox that you learn. You learn the discipline of seeing, the discipline of 
observing cultural uh, processes, and you can take those with you, you know. And so in Bangladesh, it wasn't wood shingles, it was, uh, it was bricks. And the climate's a little different, you know. In Nova Scotia, we don't have monsoons. But we were, we had trained ourselves for 30 years, really, to begin to see culture, you know, to see, have a process understanding of things. Um, so, yeah, you never know. I, I think there's nothing special about it. I think it's just about being a responsible professional, you know. Having empathy for the people, the places that you're going to build is, seems to me just like basic good manners and confidence. Nothing special. It's like the whole green thing, the whole sustainability thing. It's just bas good basic practice principles, you know. You shouldn't have to talk about it. So we spent a long time training ourselves to be good listeners or observant, uh, empathetic architects. But I think that's just, you know, being uh, responsible. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about some other projects on the horizon, maybe those that are outside of your barnyard that are a little farther afield? I know you're building, you have had a couple projects in the United States as well. Yeah, we're, we're building a few things in the U.S. now. Uh, we'll be doing a house, we just finished a house in Alabama, we're doing a house in North, in North Carolina. Uh, we're hoping to do a, another project in Bangladesh, actually, which is a very interesting project with a very interesting social program, Asian Women's University. And, and uh, they have a, a very um, strong vision about the kind of place they want to make and a kind of environmental vision, a social agency vision. So that's an interesting project for us. We're, we're trying to, uh, to land that one. Uh, so we're working mostly in North America. You know, we keep getting sniffs from Europe and things like that, but basically we're working in Ontario, Quebec, uh, United States, Alberta, Atlanta, Canada, as I say, in circles out from the barnyard. Just to get back to uh, Bangladesh for a minute, I imagine it's impossible to d be a North American and work in uh, Bangladesh without thinking about Lou Khan and seeing the buildings, the Khan buildings, and seeing a man who really knew how to deal with his bricks. Yeah, and concrete, I guess, there. Uh, well, he's a, a great inspiration to us and so many architects, I think. You know, he's an architect who was concerned with timelessness, uh, the fundamentals that don't change about architecture. Uh, that Those ideas, I think, are, uh, are really refreshing today in a world where everything is about, it seems transient and of the moment and about fashion and so on. So it's uh, looking at Khan's work certainly gives you antibodies against the sort of vagaries of fashion and, and um, things less timeless. So he's a big uh, hero for us. And when we do our public architecture, you know, it really becomes more becomes more of a hero because you know he really made his mark doing public buildings. There's an interesting paradox between thinking about timelessness and also thinking about y some of your ghost structures, which you built and e let ephemeral. Yes, let the weather and time and the land kind of slowly take away. It's really, uh, if you, it, it was a, it's really inspiring and uh, a wonderful experience to visit your work in Nova Scotia. And I'd like to open this up to questions for Brian. Anybody? Have any questions? It's a hand. Friends out there. Sorry if you touched on this is and I missed uh, it, but um, for your ghost structures, are they all, the the lumber, is it all locally sourced? Yes, it is. It, it, it's so local, it, it's painful. We, we, <laughs> we call the, uh, the, 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 the house of the sawmill owner at night. His wife takes the order, and the next morning they go out and cut the trees down, and Ladies we've got and them on the site by noontime. For those of you who accredited or voted... I think she has a question. Anybody else have a question? Okay. I have to speak up so we can hear over her. <laughs> A more mundane question, where in North Carolina is the house going to be? It's going to be on Figure Eight Island along the coast. I've never been there yet, so I'm going to get there soon. <laughs> it's, you always think about what you're going to do next, you know, that it's going to be the coolest thing. 
Yes, but I haven't been there yet. For the ghost program, I know you had this um, big event last summer. Are you going to continue bringing in students every summer? No, we've sport? taken a, a break from it, mm -hmm. uh, time out. Um, we, we, we're, uh, Princeton Press is doing a book on the conference called uh, Place, Craft, and Community and Architecture. And in the afterward, I call it the last waltz, you know. Because as you know, the band was a Canadian uh, mm -hmm. ro rock group. And so we called it the last waltz. It might be the last waltz. We may not ever do it again. If we do it again, it'll be different. And we're trying to figure out what that would be. Now, I've got lots of good advisors, starting with my family here who have to wear this thing. You know, they live in the middle of it and have to clean toilets through it and everything else. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the virtual faculty, if you like, is a wicked faculty. You know, Frampton, Johanny, Vince, you know, Rick Joy, you know, we've got a great gang of people who, Glenn Murky, you know, who are part of this thing. And so we have to find a way to keep that energy going because it's so rewarding and Everybody feels it, and so nobody wants to stop it, but it's stopping right now because we don't know exactly how to proceed. So it's going to have to reinvent itself. So if you can uh, help think that out for us, that would be uh, appreciated. We want to do something again, but we, we don't, my family don't need all these mortgages every year. <laughs> after, other? All, after all the glory work is done, you know, after the framing is done. Any other questions? For Hi, how Hello. are you? Hey, good, thank you. Um, yeah, I want to go back to, uh, in a way, the, the ghost projects as being a kind of model for education. And I know you were teaching for a long time. Um, could you just comment a little bit, if you had an ideal world, what would that look like in terms of a model for education, uh, let's say within a sort of more normative five-year program? Well, really, as I said earlier, we started GOES to remind ourselves as teachers and architects about the fundamental terms of engagement for architecture. So you know, the these, these yeah. buckets yeah. of yeah. content yeah. buckets yeah. that are timeless, that don't change. I mean, if you take community or craft or place out of architecture, you don't have architecture anymore. So there's a curriculum there. Uh, I've always had this... Uh, fantasy of the one-room schoolhouse, you know. Um, and it, it wouldn't be a design-build thing. I mean, the design-build part of it was important because it's the easiest way to introduce the craft dimension, is to get your hands dirty or get on a, a rafter and be scared and all of that and feel the materials. But I don't think that design-build is the best way to learn to design. I think design-build's a little bit of an oxymoron, you know, I think the, the, to learn to design, you shouldn't be too close to the, to the materials. When, when I'm at the GO site, I, I do dumb things, like pound nails and things, because I can be the architect then. I can have the distance from the coal face, if you like, to think more like an architect. So, this, so one of the reasons we're rethinking Ghost is because we don't necessarily think that we want to be a design-build thing. It's never been a macho uh, design-build thing. Uh, mostly the design-build aspects of GHOST are to teach architects, engineers, the people who have taken part, professors, uh, humility. That, it, it, that, you know, the, the really good builder people that have helped us over the years with GHOST have a sense of elegance about how you do things so you don't have to be macho. You know, the smallest woman on the site can plumb a building that's been built crooked and all the young bucks in the world will never straighten it out, you know, the way architects think. Or you, using the ocean horizon as a, as a level. You know, watching people with PhDs with a 200 foot long string level argue about le what is level when they're looking right at the ocean horizon. You know, so uh, really what I love about Ghost from a building point of view is that it teaches humility and respect for people who who build, and I think if you if you don't respect the builders who are the enablers of what we do, then you're that asshole architect that they love to hate, you know. And so, 
So those are the kind of design build lessons in a way, not to make architects into builders, but make architects people who respect builders, realize they can learn from builders. So there's need, there needs to be some recalibration about Ghost, but I think the content buckets are pretty robust. You know, environment, making, and community, social Thanks. agency, that's kind of it. That's a, that's a good school. It, Ghost in the information age has been able to be a, have this amazing virtual faculty. So a simple program with a great faculty, that sounds like pretty good to me. That sounds pretty great to us too. Thank you so much, Robbie Roberts, and I mean Brian Mackey Lines. <laughs> Thank and you. And we hope it's not the last waltz. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me.